Well, guys, this is the end, at least until May the 7th. The haves and the have-nots finale, out of time, aired uh, about 40 minutes ago. And uh, before I get into the review, just to give you an update, I was watching If Loving You Is Wrong, but then at 10.37, Xfinity or my Wi-Fi just copped out on me. And I'm like, you know what? It's only like 13 minutes left or something like that. And to be honest, uh, or 23 minutes, to be honest, the episode was a bit flat for me. I was watching it. You know, I was laughing a bit, but I'm like, this episode is not enough to keep me wanting to watch more so I can see why they're doing the two night event. So I figured, let me go ahead and record my episode review for the finale of the haves and have nots. I seriously need to eat something. I have not eaten since like two o'clock, maybe because out of excitement. So my, if loving you was wrong, let it burn episode review that will be up sometime Wednesday, okay? So that will be up around tomorrow morning. Don't worry, it's coming. But let's talk about this finale. Um, Overall, I did like the episode, but it really fell flat. And guys, I know some people are like, oh, you always find something wrong with it. Well, there was. Um, they, I, I feel like way too much stuff that was set up in the previous two episodes that we thought would actually happen in this finale didn't even happen. Like the whole gun thing. And, and guys, you can tell that I'm not too excited to talk about this episode because I was actually right about the tattoo. Like if you follow me on Instagram, my story, I went off because... I watched that part live and I was good to go. So I was yelling, screaming, but it's kind of calmed down now because I'm looking at my notes as the, as a whole for the episode. And I'm a stickler for continuity. Number one, Benny talked to Mitch and it is confirmed that it is $20,000. I mean, I gave Benny somewhat the benefit of the doubt. And some people even hit me up on this last week too. It's like, Hey, Jeremy, I know you did the math and $9,000 is the interest amount, but maybe he said 20,000 on purpose. So he can just keep about 11,000 in his own pocket. But when he talked to Mitch and said 20,000, Mitch confirmed that yes, somehow Benny owes the Malone's $20,000 when it should be only nine thousand dollars if they had mentioned that hey you know what the interest was originally nine thousand but since you held out on us and stuff like that then it's late and you owe us an additional 11 that makes no sense but whatever um then another thing veronica telling david that she was the one that orchestrated everything with erica by paying her and setting her up in david's life no, she didn't. Candace did all that. The only reason that Veronica got involved was because she found out about the plan and then decided, you know what, Candace, I want to help you get out of jail for the whole Quincy Maxwell murder situation, but only if you let me in the plan with you and Erica. And Erica and Veronica never exchanged words in regards to the plan. Remember, those two were working together, Candace and Veronica, just for the sake of, hey, you got me out of jail, so I'll let you into the plan. You set up this bank account, the bank, so I could transfer these millions of dollars and I'll let you know the home address for David's new house. And then after that, Veronica was pretty much a loose cannon. She did everything herself, but it had nothing to do with Erica. The only time Candace used any information that Veronica gave her and gave that to Erica was when Veronica told Candace to tell Erica to not do anything out of the ordinary because David is very paranoid. He knows everything has to be in its place. And if one thing is out of place, he'll know something is wrong. And that's when Candace called Erica and pretty much said, you know what? Forget everything I just said, trying to get his money and whatnot. Just, um, well, stay where you are. Just kind of just be a sitting duck, which actually defined it, defined Erica's role pretty well. That entire season in 2018, she absolutely did nothing but stay around the house. So, Veronica had nothing to do with that. I, I don't know where that was coming from, but those are two big things that stuck out to me in terms of, yeah, that makes no damn sense. The interest money amount and Veronica saying she had anything to do with it. Okay. Um, and, and guys, there were some bits I did like, so I don't want you to make it feel, I, I don't want to come across this as if I hated the episode. I didn't. I just felt like the editing was a bit choppy. Like there was a lot of stuff that they should have put in there, or at the very least, they should have made this episode a 90 minute episode. If they could do that with, if loving you is wrong, then they should do that with the haves and the have nots. Um, let's go back to, I'm sorry, I'm kind of all over the place, but I had to voice my biggest 
gripes about the episode. Okay. So Hannah's just, you know, recalling from being happy and praising God that Candace and her finally came together. Benny ruins the moment by trying to get rid of that dude, Derek. And he, he says this like eight times in the damn episode. And it's so annoying. And no, guys, I'm not giving Benny credit for him being right about Derek. You know, I don't like this dude. When has Benny ever tried to get along with Derek? I know later in the episode, Hannah asks him to go down there and keep him company because um, Benny talks about how he noticed Derek crying and whatnot. If we would have gotten a scene like that, like if Benny went down trying to be nice to see what was going on. But no, Benny has not once tried to give uh, uh, Derek a chance. So I don't give him any credit whatsoever for calling out Derek for being not a nice guy. So, I mean, how about that time when him and Derek were talking about how to handle Malik and Derek said that, yeah, you know, back in my day, I used to be young too, run with the wrong crowd. We'll handle that dude. You would think that would give Benny one sign that I don't think this dude's too, you know, he's flying with a straight deck. Those moments would have been good, but no, you just wrote Benny to be, be a complete asshole. So I don't care what he thinks about Derek. Um, I might as well jump ahead to the end of the episode. Yeah, you know, it was great. Hannah walks in and then he shows her the tattoo and then that was a good cliffhanger. But the episode itself, I feel like they really exaggerated and stretched out these characters' personality. Like, let's go over to Justin. Um, sorry, I'm getting some messages right now about the episode. I never liked Justin, but at the same time, why did they just dial up his creepy meter from like a like a eight all the way to a twenty five? Like I took those pictures while you weren't watching. How about some wine? I can fix us some dinner. How about we pull out the couch? You drink this so you're comfortable with have sex. Now look, I don't believe Michael Jackson did anything with those kids, but just the way uh, Justin was talking, it's like here, have some wine, some warm milk and cookies. That'll make the sex easier. What, Mike? Oh, I didn't say anything. Yes, you did. You want to be starting something. I'm just playing. I'm sorry, guys. I had to do that. I I, I just wanted him to slit his own throat. And I've already done a video on that. It's like, yeah, put the bottle down. Gosh, I wanted to love this episode so much. Okay, um, let's talk about Justin. I talked about Hannah. Uh, a good scene. Candace going over to see Charles after visiting Hannah. And she just, Tinka Sumner is just... Candace is so much more attractive when she's happy and smiling in a genuine fashion. I love those two interacting with each other. Charles saying, say it again. I was right. And then, you know, I like that. Then we move forward to the White House. And then Candace asking if Charles was sure about bringing her to the White House. And he's like, absolutely. It reminded me of a couple seasons ago, all the characters that asked Jim, are you sure you want to run for governor? Yes, I'm sure. And then he eventually goes on the live TV to make the announcement. And then his skeletons are exposed when you have Celine and his two sons pop up and that literally shot his chances of winning all the hell not to mention getting arrested but um yeah he watches her on the tv later and I was I'm yeah we were right that you know hey you know what Jim was watching tv and he was really watching to see if George pulled anything you know while he wasn't looking and then we do get the nod to him actually seeing Candace on you know well he sees the news we don't actually see it but yeah, um, she's on the news at the White House and stuff like that. And we learned that Charles's wife passed away during the midterms. But he he kind of scoffed at it because he knows firsthand, you know, hey, you mess with Candace, you're not get. Yeah, I couldn't even get the governor's mansion. Ain't no way in hell you're going to get the White House. So a lot of the moments I anticipated the most in this episode felt glossed over. I, I feel like that's why I feel it's a bit lackluster. Like, don't get me wrong. I was elevated. Like, you know, what's the word? Elated when I saw the lion, tat lion tattoo. But overall, it's like, meh, that was right. So whatever. Okay. So um, uh, here's another character whose personality was just like, are we really doing this? I did love how Veronica was screaming for Alice to get her a drink, even though Alice quit like a day ago. So that was pretty funny. But did we really have to spend like 20 minutes of her going back and forth with David, just refusing to blame herself, being paranoid, and then being extremely inconsistent with how painful David's back is? What, in the episode when um, Veronica came over to David's house to say, I forgive you, let's try to make this work, even a slight touch from a embrace was enough to make him real in pain, but he, she clearly gave him a hug in this episode and he didn't do anything. And then they go out to the pool once again, just blaming, blaming, blaming him for everything. And I already made 
uh, discuss. I already talked about the whole Erica situation. Um, damn, guys, not much to say on that. It was just the same thing. It's like this is your fault. You slept with Maggie. You slept with Erica, and then it's like, oh no, you're in pain. But I taught you right, and I'm like, how long are we going to do this? So then David, excuse me, then David um, goes to his car and calls Jim pretty much saying, you know, I'm about to snap. And she says one more thing. And I'm thinking the whole time we saw Veronica looking crazy and then get up from the pool because she said she was going to wait right there. And I'm like, um, David, if I were you, I would either have been in my car and drove off and called um, Jim or at least been in the car with the windows up, the doors locked. That way, when you're screaming at the top of your lungs, bitch evil bitch and whatnot and you want to snap her i don't think you should say that while you're standing right outside of her house because she could hear you i was waiting for veronica to come out with a gun or something i I really was but um i i really think that they kind of dragged on scenes and made characters act they pretty much took characters personality but then just dialed it up for apparently no reason like I'm kind of like David. I was about to snap if I had to endure like 60 more seconds of Veronica belittling him. And then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, are you okay? And I don't want to sound ungrateful. Like literally, guys, I I actually feel bad for myself recording this because I don't feel like as excited as I thought it would be because this episode kind of like was a flat can of soda. All right. Um, Captain finds out why I took the pills. We already knew that from the preview. And this, and Owen just really needs to dial it back with all these previews and gifts and whatnot. Because once I do those expanded videos talking about what I think is going to happen, then it actually happens. Jim talks to Wyatt. Pretty much goes nowhere. Uh, what? Catherine said cold medication. Um, volume. Does that also include the happy pill she gave Hannah? Because one pill was enough to send Hannah off the deep end. So I can't imagine what the whole bottle would do to Wyatt. Um, Goes upstairs. Already talked about this stuff. Catherine's the only one asking the right question. As soon as Wyatt mentioned a gun, she's like, what shotgun? Which is kind of interesting because, you know, that is your father's house. And I get that all this stuff was moved to the basement. So... I think Catherine would be more aware of the amount of guns in the house than Jim, because remember, that's Catherine's father's house. So just like with Amanda, Catherine's the only one taking the gun threat seriously. And Jim's like, I love you, blah, blah, blah. Boom, die. Then he practices his Elmer Fudd impression. All right. um, Yeah, Candace looked good in the dress. She did. Yeah, I'm halfway through my notes here. Um, I already talked about Hannah. Uh, what was it? Harold was an old boyfriend or a man she was interested in that Benny didn't like. Um, well, wait, didn't he, didn't he say that was one of the few he did like? Uh, then, you know, he makes it's like, man, if I would have known the guy that would have did that, that raped you back in the day. And he's like, man, that boy, that man's probably dead or in jail. And I'm like, really? At that point, you knew it was Derek. Um, they go to the White House. Oh, yeah, this is the last part of the episode to talk about the White House. Um. Great Oval Office. I love the scenery. It was great. Um, Oh, yeah, they shut that down quick, Mr. President. Um, Sorry, the president-elect. Well, excuse me, Miss White Woman, who's slightly attractive. I Get out of my face. Uh, Landon is pretty much, you know, yeah, the president is supposed to give the tour, not just some person. So Landon is like Catherine, the only one taking this seriously because he knows something ain't right. And it isn't just, you know, prejudice and whatnot. It's just not correct protocol. Then we meet the president and first lady. I really got some Bush Clinton vibes from this guy. Um, the first lady was there. Yeah, that, that was a pretty good scene. But even before they came in, just the vibe between Candace and Charles, like, you know, this suits you, him standing next to the desk. I'm not going to lie. Charles looked pretty fly next to the desk. That, that's all right. Um, then later on, we find FBI and Scott. So Kyle and Scott have a scene. Uh, it looks like a Kyle is the attorney general, attorney general. And um, pretty much calls the president and what? Yeah, they all think that Charles is an arrogant, snot-nosed punk. And for whatever reason, what was it? Hot piece of black ass. Whew. My gosh. I can't wait for Jeffrey Owens to show up then. Let's see what that's like. Is Charles, I mean, apparently he, from what I know from behind the scenes, he knows of Charles. So is he somebody he's in? 
Is he on Charles's team? Is he the vice president? Is he also someone who's going to flirt with Candace? I want to know how that's going to work out. Yeah, but it, this episode lead left a lot to be desired. Like, okay, you build up the gun, but we don't see the gun. You have the Justin bottle thing, and I just want him to slit his own throat. God damn. You know what? This is not the mid seat. This was not the finale review that I planned to do. Guys, I... Let me apologize. I want to apologize because I really thought I would be able to grin from ear to ear while doing this. Just the hype of being right from the Derek theory. Overall, this episode wasn't that good. Um, I'm still going to give it an 8 out of 10 because I love the Oval Office. We got to meet the President and First Lady. Um, I did like the... I'm looking at notes here. I'm trying to figure out what else I liked. Damn. Candace and Charles were the best part of the episode. Looking at my notes, Candace and Charles were the best part of the episode. And Landon. Guys, I'm literally looking over my notes trying to find something else. And the tattoo part. So, you know what? Forget it. 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10. Um, Out of time... And I'm out of patience for a lot of these plot points. This episode severely needed a 90-minute finale. It needed that extension. I, uh, like I said at the beginning, went through some Wi-Fi issues. I'm pretty sure somebody will upload if Loving You is Wrong to YouTube within the next 15 minutes. It's 10.56 right now. I'm going to go ahead and edit this video, post it on the channel. I'll do my if Loving You is Wrong episode recap. Um, tomorrow morning like I'm looking at my notes here I don't even have half a page for loving you is wrong because I forgot how drawn out the show could be but overall out of time eh, it's kind of like last week's episode 15 minutes everybody got on my case Jeremy you ought to be ashamed this was a great episode it was a 10 out of 10 it was the best episode ever we had Candace and Hannah now do you see what I mean when it comes to just because you can have one great scene doesn't make up for an entirely lackluster episode, that's how I felt about this episode. So you can hate me if you want to. I don't care. That's my opinion. But in any case, seriously, it's been a fun ride from January the 8th to uh, March 19th. We only need to wait less than two months, guys. The haves and the have-nots will return. But I wanted to just take a moment to really say I appreciate every single one of you who have been rocking with me ever since i started this channel even when i was blogging even when i was just tweeting it really means a lot i know there are a lot of other subscribers on the channel now compared to when the year started if i'm not mistaken uh, we hit around 60,000 subscribers sometime in january and we're almost 10,000. you know an increase from there hopefully at the rate the channel's growing it seems like everything is back on track we should hit 70,000 by the end of the month so welcome everyone and if you are new to here uh, new here i hope you like it um this Channels all about reviewing Tyler Perry shows. If loving you is wrong, the haves and the have nots talking about movies, no posting full episodes. I'm a full-time YouTuber, so I don't want to jack up my form of income. But uh, if you, if you enjoyed the episode, by all means, I'm glad you did as a whole for me, not so much. I, I am a, I am disappointed. We didn't get a trailer. I uh, not too disappointed, but I'm like, I'm slightly disappointed we probably won't get one until next month sometime, I'm guessing. But to be honest, I really feel like this episode itself needed a trailer to kind of piggyback off of, you know, the ending. Maybe we'll get a trailer uploaded tonight. Maybe that will happen. Or maybe during If Loving You Is Wrong, there was a trailer I didn't see due to my Wi-Fi acting up. But um, to all the cast members, if there's any cast members watching... Uh, I appreciate all the tweets and everything, and don't, just because the show's off doesn't mean I'm going to not bother you, so I'll, I'll be in touch with you all, but um, this episode wasn't that good. It wasn't that good. Um, the Oval Office scene, like I said, probably my favorite, and just Candace in general with Charles and Landon. <sighs> okay, well, I guess that's it. So as always, like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and guys, please share this channel around. I really would appreciate it. But aside from that, I believe that's all there is to it. I will probably sit down and kind of map out any other videos I want to pull from the episode. I'm sure I can find a few topics of discussion, but at the moment, I don't have much I really want to talk about. So it is 1059, so I'm finishing this video exactly when If Loving You Is Wrong is about to come to an end. So thanks so much. 
I appreciate the support and love. I really do. Check out my social media in the description below, and I'll talk to you all soon. Congratulations on making it to the end of this video. If you like what you just saw, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, or if you have anything you would like to add to the video, make sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to keep up with me on social media, go to the description box. All of my links for social media are right there. Also, if you feel like you would like to donate to the channel, make sure to click on the link to PayPal. Any amount helps, a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars. As a full-time YouTuber, any support from my fans really does mean a lot to me. Finally, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon. That way you're kept up to date on any new content I post to the channel. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you in the next video.